Hi and welcome. I'm Caroline Best of the Dow of Horsemanship. I think you all know who Lovey is, my partner. We are going to be continuing our number one secret to riding in balance and confidence with your horse. We're going to be continuing this three-part series and today is part three. In our previous videos, part one and two, I discussed and demonstrated that the number one secret to riding in balance and with confidence and in harmony with your horse, and it had nothing to do with the rider's experience or skill sets either. We looked at what that looked like with Lovey in the previous videos, and we will dive in even deeper today. <laughs> Good girl. Being a good or even great rider begins with a good or even greater riding horse. And this follows the great masters in classical horsemanship and the academic art of riding. They always prepared their horses movement before the rider was introduced to the movement. So this isn't anything I'm making up. This is something I've been following from the great masters of classical dressage, the art of horsemanship and the academic art of riding. <clears throat> and this dates back hundreds of years. So no matter how big the movement is with your horse, having a horse that is smooth, relaxed, and regular, as well as balanced in their movement, will help most riders learn to ride well, feel confident as if you're in control with your balance point, not to mention definitely being able to sit that movement fluidly. Not to mention riding a smooth horse allows a rider to focus on themselves, learning the many pieces of rider mechanics necessary to being a good or great rider. Developing a horse's movement should begin on the ground and with the lunge, preferably the free lunge. And so today we're gonna be talking specifically about free lunging and what that should look like. And Lovey is um, one of my schoolmasters, but she's also out of shape. We haven't trained this way in a year and a half. So just like the previous two videos, you're going to see her a little off balance. She might be, it might be easier for Lovey to travel tracking to the right or left in a more collected movement, meaning she won't be as hollowed. She'll have a more of a, a rounded top line and a longitudinal stretch. So we're gonna talk more about this and what it should look like. But it's good because a lot of your horses are gonna look a lot worse than Lovey, gonna look like Lovey. I doubt most of your horses are going to be able to stretch like you'll see her. It takes a long time for a horse to be able to stretch in this movement. And like I mentioned in the previous, videos, being able to stretch down, the horse being able to put their nose on the ground and trot and stay rhythm, rhythmic and regular and relaxed. So rhythmic and regular means they have a consistent tempo. They don't speed up and they don't slow down. So that takes a lot of time, you guys, in development because a horse really has to use their hind end to control all of their balance and movement. And so it takes a while, obviously. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the longitudinal stretch is so important because as I've been mentioning, it is what I refer to as Pilates for horses. And so if you just do this with your body, and this is really important to understand the biomechanics, <clears throat> I often like to teach it in my students first, in their bodies, my riders, because this is what the horse is gonna be feeling in their body. It's not what you're gonna feel as a rider, it's what you're, you're gonna be doing this because this is what your horse is feeling in their body. So if these are my hind legs and these are my front legs and I just lean over and stretch and allow my head to come down straight, what happens through my back and my shoulders and my neck? Wow, it starts to stretch, doesn't it? And the opposite would be if I tensed up and pulled my head up, like a horse will do when they're off balance. They raise their head up to catch their balance because their hind end isn't developed. And so when I do this movement, ow, 
wow, that hurts and it tightens up my shoulder and it tightens up my back and I can start to feel specific points along my spine, my top line, where it's ouchy. So the more I stretch, wow, I might be tight, it might be a little sore, but this sure feels good. And so the Pilates for horses, the whole purpose of stretching is to stretch so that you can also stretch, lengthen, and strengthen. Those three words, they are paramount to this free lunge, to any of the lunging. They must have a longitudinal stretch. So the stretch allows the horse to lengthen the tendons, lengthen the movement. And while they're lengthening, they're also developing strength. And that is the key to developing elasticity and collection in the movement. It's the key, it's the whole foundation. Reason why I don't real quick want Lovey touching um, the weeds or the grass is because I sprayed weed kill in here. It's been raining all summer, you guys. It's been impossible to get out here. In the winter, this is nothing but sand, but um, she keeps smelling it and then she does the Fleming because for some reason, horses are attracted to weed kill. So be careful, don't let them eat it. So that's why I keep after her, not to touch it. All right, <clears throat> so in the previous video, part two, I explained what equipment to use and the size you need. And they're both very important. For one, this is truly a natural free lunge. Natural meaning I'm allowing my horse to find the stretch. I'm not forcing her. This is key. I'm not gonna be tying Lovey down. You should never do that. So it may take a lot longer, but it's so worth it because during the process of teaching your horse how to relax into the movement and, and produce this stretch, you're also working their mind. And so a lot of horses have a lot of bad experiences with round penning and lunging, and it does take a while to introduce this way to them where they find safety, comfort, and relaxation, meaning that you're not in here running them around. They're never gonna develop properly if you do that. So we're gonna start out always slow at the walk. The walk is so underestimated as a gate. And we're gonna work on the big walk. And the whole purpose of the big walk, and I'll talk more about this when I demonstrate it with Lovey, is that Lovey just keeps lengthening her stride. All right, lengthening her stride. And in the beginning, when your horses are tight, they're gonna pick up a real tight little trot. It's gonna be really hard because lengthening and stretching, woo, these are muscles that they've been using like this for too long, just like us. So in the beginning, if all you do is sit in front of a computer and you're tight in your upper body, and then all of a sudden you take your first Pilates or yoga class, or you just start trying to stretch, you may not be able to get any farther down than this. And then the more you stretch, the more you keep doing it, the more you keep doing it, well, it's the same principle for the horse. And it's super important to do it correctly and to do it slowly. So that's why we're introducing the free lunge at the walk only. Of course, I'm gonna show you what her trot's gonna look like when she looks um, relaxed and fluid enough. And I'll show you what her collected canner, maybe today, maybe I won't. Lovey will tell me by watching her body and I will be talking about it, what she's able and capable of doing today. Now she's a schoolmaster, but she's out of shape. And so, and she may not mentally be able to relax right away, like I explained in the previous video last week. It takes her a couple of days getting back into the swing of things to just really relax because she's got such a high work ethic. So you really do need to know your horse. They're all so different. And what works best for your horse? I know the first two or three days of getting back into a schedule is just let her find relaxation. And by the third or fourth day, she is so relaxed and focused on the work. Not all horses are like that though, okay? So you gotta know your horse. <clears throat> so as far as equipment, all we need today is a standard lunge whip. This lunging of mine will not work any other way. So you can't use a carriage whip, you can't use a dressage whip, you can't use a carriage stick or a handy stick. Those are ridiculous anyway. You need to use this wonderful, long, firm but flexible piece of equipment. This is, as I mentioned, I'm 5'8". With these boots, I'm 5'9". So this is probably 5'5", five five, the hard part. And then you have an equal amount in the tail. 
you need this. Any higher and it's going to get too flimsy. Any shorter and you can't guide the body properly. Okay, so this is a guiding instrument. It's a tool to communicate to your horse and guide the body. All right, it's all you need right now in the free lunch. It's all you need. Mm, I love you too, you sweet girl. Now this round pen is at least 50 feet in diameter. <clears throat> These panels are 12 feet in length. I don't remember how many I have, but at least a 50 foot. Lovey is a pretty standard size horse. She's 16 2, 16 3. She has a really nice stride. She really lengthens. You don't want anything smaller than this. Um, mostly because you want your horse to learn to travel straight. Straightness. This is straightness training right now. Straight on a circle. So if you have a 40 foot, it's going to be too small for her to really find it, especially in the beginning because your horses are way, way unbalanced, you guys. All of them. And this is how you test it. And so if you have a second or third level dressage horse that does a ton of lunging online and you feel that they're straight and balanced, can you put them in a round pen? And can you ask them to come in or on the line online? If I had Sundance in here, Lovey's not as good as Sundance by any means. Sundance would be able to stretch do her little warm up and then I'd be able to have a five meter collected canter around me free and Sundance would be bent in the direction of movement. So that's where you're headed with this. And my God, when you ride that at that level, it, I mean, all of her movement is so smooth. Sundance, even though she has a big movement, it is very fluid, much easier for us to learn to ride. So 50 foot, and if you don't have a round pen, you would have to work online. And that's what we were showing in the previous two videos is how to size up a 50 meter circle out in a big arena online and work from there. So again, we're gonna begin at the big free walk. Your whip is your guide to help guide. You'll see how I'm going to use it to guide the body. Guide the, <clears throat> specifically the inside hind leg, whichever direction you're going in. We want to guide that and keep pushing it and stretching it. We want to guide the shoulder to keep the shoulder straight so the horse doesn't lean in or drop a shoulder. We might have to guide the neck to help straighten them out. So your whip isn't just going to be there cracking. We don't crack to get our horses to go. We don't use it. Okay? Still spooks her. I never did that after all this time. And we're not going to be using our whip like this either. The whip is not to make the horse go. This is called overfacing your horse. It's scary because it's overstimulating and overwhelming, especially to a really sensitive horse like this. She's very high sensitive, very intelligent. And so you don't need a lot with Lovey. You're going to learn how to use this whip slowly, powerfully, slow, rhythmic, can always touch, gently touch, and then it's going to follow quietly. Follow the horse and go wherever the body you need. You see the body leaning in, not going straight, and then it's going to follow the horse again. That's it. This is not a problem solving video, but if your horses can't handle the walk or the whip, you're going to have to put them online and you're going to need a lot more help to get your horse to the point where they can feel safe in here and relaxed in here and tuned into you and not scared. So this is not a problem solving video. All right. So when you get your horse going, and I'm going to demonstrate all of this and talk about it again, when you get them going in this big circle, all you need to focus on in the beginning is speed and direction. Keep them going in the same direction and keep them going at a big free walk. Just focus on that before we start paying attention to how the body looks. So there's a lot of phases to this. In the beginning, you need to get your direction and your speed. And it may take days or weeks, I don't care, until you guys can come in here consistently and know that this is what we do. We just come in at a nice, relaxed, big walk. That's all I'm asking. And then once you guys have that down 
and the horse isn't trying to change direction or gets confused or keeps stopping or speeding up, once you have your big walk in the same direction, I don't care how long it takes, days or weeks, because it can, then you're going to start focusing on the horse's body and how to help the body stretch. Beautiful. Yeah, you a good girl. Good girl. So in the beginning, most of your horses, 99% of them, they will not be able to walk straight. They'll be crooked. They'll drop a shoulder, lean in, kick their hindquarters out. They'll carry a high headset. A high headset is when the neck is above the wither. Right now, Lovey has just an average relaxed headset. I eventually want to see it get lower, lower, and lower as we're walking. So anything above what you see right now, that means the horse is what? Look at me, tightening up their shoulder and their pole and using their two points of resistance in their top line, their pole and their shoal, to balance themselves. Now, there are the cases where the horse is just nervous in here. Nervous for lots of different reasons and they'll carry their head high. They'll st I've seen many horses carry their head high and still be able to track up and have a really excellent balanced movement. So a high head is mental and physical. Mental meaning they don't feel relaxed, they don't feel safe in this space, they might have had negative experiences, maybe you're confusing them, all the above. It can also mean that they're physically unbalanced. In either case, you're going to keep doing this work until they relax, mentally and physically. Horse might be nervous. Most horses are nervous in here again. They start to panic, whether you're confusing them or they've had bad experiences. I mean, most horses are going to do that. They have a short stride versus a long, stretchy stride um, and not able to track up. So this list that I just went through represents most of the horses out there. So just know that it's going to take time, days or weeks, and it should. This is classical training where we work with where the horse is. We're not here to make her do anything or force her to do anything she's not ready to do. And what is the ultimate goal for me and everything? There's two key words, connection and relaxation. I want my horse always connected to me mentally, in the heart, and physically. And then I want relaxation. If I don't see connection in every horse I work with all the time or a level of relaxation, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to change that. All right. So let's show them what that should look like, my dear. All right, guys. So <clears throat> Lovey's a little apprehensive. Like I said, you got to know your horse and, you know, I can pick up my whip and just pay attention to all of this. Look at her. Her head's up high. What I say? Always an indication. Eyes are a little big. And it's like, oh my gosh, Lovey, how many years have we been messing around with this? Relax. But I have an overachiever and I also have a horse with leftover trauma from her early days on the track. Some things they'll never let go of. It's called PTSD. It's real. But just pay attention to it because if I don't have a horse that's what? Connected and relaxed, things are going to start to spiral out of control. And this is not a problem solving video. So for those of you that are interested in learning how to start and finish your horse, including all of this, that's what my mastery membership riding foundation program is all about because it dives in deep and helps you problem solve while it sets you up with a step-by-step -step curriculum on how to achieve all of this. All right, all of this, the whole relationship, the connection piece, the riding bitless, the riding bareback, bridleless, the lunging, the relationship, having a really well-balanced and well-rounded horse. So we always start in the center because this is your good test. Can your horse come with you in the center? I don't want my horse coming into a space like this and anticipating or thinking that we're just going to go. Where's your connection? She needs to come in here and just wait. And often we do some bonding and loving and grounding and getting us in a really good state of mind before we begin. Yeah, she's looking pretty good. <clears throat> good girl, love. So I'm going to back her up. Good girl. And I'm going to send her to the left because I recommend that you always start off on the easiest side. 
And if you don't know which side your horse travels best, this will help. And I think in the last video, we started on line to the right, and it was really hard for her to relax. And so the left was a lot easier. And it could vary. It could vary. Good girl, love. I'm going to back her up a little bit more. Good girl. And we're just waiting. I don't want her anticipating anything. Good. I'm going to send her to the rail and add a walk. So watch my whip, guys. It's going to push her body parts out. See how the whip's just going up and down from the ground up. Nice and quiet. Good girl with the stretch, love. Come. Good. So get her on the rail. Good. Use your whip to just go towards the shoulder. Yep. Or the haunches. Good. So if, if she started to lean in or come in, I would use the whip up and down from the ground up, up and down. Just wave it up and down like this to keep her straight, the shoulder straight. Good girl. So that's a really awesome stretch. I'd like to see a big walk though. So push. Yep. Keep pushing. Good girl. I recommend that you start counting the four beat to the walk. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is what I teach my riders, that you start to embody the rhythm that you want to ride. It's magical, especially when we learn to lunge this way and ride this way. And I don't want her eating, so that's a good correction, because there's poison. I know, thank you. Yeah, you got a good bite on the arse on that one. Good girl. Yep. My horses do not know voice commands, so I don't use them and I don't recommend them. Because your horse can listen to the voice command and still have their mind somewhere else. Not good. Good girl. So count your four beat again. What you count the four beat. That's the beat you want her to walk. One, two, three, four. One, two, a big walk. Three, four. One, two, three, four. She slows down. Push the energy forward. One, two, three, four. This is how you start to get synchronized, you guys. This is part of the depth of connection that I teach you all. And this is what keeps you safe when the horse is this focused on you. Good. And it feels good. Good girl. Lots of positive. Now look how far back I am. See how my whip I'm parallel to my horse right now. So I don't want to see you guys get any further ahead. Good girl, love. You just keep counting that beat, embody it, push her. Maybe give her a cluck, your supporting aid. Good. Good girl. So what you want eventually is that you keep counting the four beat, the tempo that you want, and your horse starts to get aligned with your tempo. That's what we want to work on. So that your whip becomes a very minimal aid, a, very, a minimal supporting aid. Good. Good girl. So she's starting to get more relaxed and consistent. She's, her walk is getting a little more consistent. Good girl. I want you guys to pay attention to her body and, and what's working, how she's using it. So the more she lowers, her head, the more she opens up her wither area in her shoulders and that allows her to get a better, a better reach with her fore. The more she opens up and stretches, she can track up more with her hind. Good. So she's over tracking a little, which is excellent. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. So I can Push that shoulder back over. Good, love. Good girl. So yeah, this is good for you all to see when you have grass in your round pen. Give them a good correction and stop. I'm not here to punish her. I made my point. That's how horses treat each other. I made my point. And here's my question. I don't want you eating. I know it's hard, but you have a pasture full of grass 24 seven. Okay. Good girl. So you might have to do this many times. You're going to have to be prepared to have patience, consistency with your horses. Okay. Good. Good. 
So that was a really fair and effective correction, and I was done. I just made my correction. Good girl. And you can hear Lovey. She's a very sensitive horse. She can get up really fast. So see, I'm going to walk right in to her neck and push her. Good girl. Push her straight to the round pen. <laughs> Count your four beat. That's a beautiful collected trot. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's how awesome it gets when your horse comes back to your tempo. Good girl, because you're going to want to ride this way, you guys. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl, babe. That's a positive reinforcement, too. All right. So what are the qualities we're looking for? That your horse can stretch their top line, lower their nose almost to the ground. This is going to allow her wither and top line area and shoulder to open up and allow her to get more freedom through her top line so that her hind end can stretch more underneath of her and track up. Good girl. So when this is going really well, she's what? Maintaining her speed and direction. You can start paying attention to her. And as I said, she's over tracking at the walk. Good girl. So let's see what it looks like at the trot. And like the walk, one, two, one, two, I count the beat. So see, I didn't even need to use my whip. So you can have a smaller circle on the inside. Use your whip to keep going up and down to keep her out and straight. And we want a big trot right now. In the beginning, you want them tracking. That's beautiful at the trot. You don't want that slow little collected trot she gave us. That's awesome. But in the beginning, they need to stretch, you guys. You need to keep building the strength and the balance. So this is a very straight and very balanced horse. This is what it will ultimately look like. Good girl. Now, how does it look if she were to pick up the canner? Good. Now I'm going to relax more in the center and hold the 3B canner because I want her to relax into it. And that means drop her head more and get a more regular canner. Good. Come. Good. So Lovey doesn't need a lot of pressure from me. I can't follow that. Let's see if she'll come in. Good. Let's just watch her movement. Good girl. Come. She's out of shape. I know. Good girl. So. What's going to be cool is we keep getting back into shape, Lovey and me, and developing this new course, The Art of Lunging, aka Pilates for Horses. We're going to see her develop. And what will happen is she's going to be able to do a small little canter around me, very slow, very arced in, and very balanced. But isn't that a beautiful movement? Every horse should be able to do this. Doesn't matter what breed, you guys. Good girl. Come, sit, sit. Good, good, come. Good. So I don't want her speeding up into the canter. I want her to sit back. This is where you're going to teach your horses through. There's a lot more gymnastics that I teach in the mastery membership, but you want them to sit back on their haunches and go into the canter. You don't want them pulling you into the canter with their forehand and hollowing out. Good, come. Ooh, her circle's getting smaller. Good, come, come. Good, 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 come, come. Nope, nope, good, pick it up. She wants to play. Come here. Come. Yep, good. So when you watch Lovey play, she's kind of all over the place right now. She's not picking up her correct lead at the canter. She's, her movement is not very graceful. And I want you guys to see this because as this is why when we start Liberty training, we don't just start here. We don't just start moving our horses around and get them all excited because if they're not balanced, mentally, 
they're going to lose their minds. And if they're not balanced physically, they're going to hurt some, something, hurt themselves. But I want you guys, because this is going to be a barometer now. This is the beginning of us getting back into shape. So this barometer, you're going to be like, wow, Lovey wasn't very fluid. And she was really in other courses of mine years ago, like the OTTB course and possibly the mastery membership. You're going to see a much more fluid horse. But again, we are out of shape. Won't take us long to get back into shape, but you need to train your eye. And you might look at this and go, wow, that looks really great. It isn't. It's about 50% of how good it should be. It's sloppy. She's not as fluid. She's not taking enough time to just that nanosecond to kind of sit back, gather her body together, and then change into the next movement. She's kind of just all over the place. It's both mental and physical. All right. Come here, girl. Let's do the other side real quick. <clears throat> Come. So one of the key things that's so important right now to see is how I could get Lovey really revved up and get her right back into a walk. That took a long time because of the way she was previously trained as a racehorse. And a lot of your horses are going to be that way just because of the way they've been trained in general. So the round pen and or lunging has been a very chaotic negative experience. Horses have been pushed and made to go, go, go. There's no connection. Nobody is looking for relaxation. And you're not going to have any safety. And the irony of all of that is they tell you to just go do it to get the energy out of your horse. And really all you're doing is developing more chaos, more adrenaline in your horse. And they might be tired a little bit by the time you ride, or at least manageable. But you're not really going to have the level of safety. And this is part of developing your confidence. Develop the horse. Get the horse to be safe. What does safe look like? That I can push her go button and boom, go. <laughs> And I can pull it right back down to a well. Pretty cool, huh? Hi. How would you like to ride like that? Maybe not that crazy, but that connected. All right. That's a great introduction into the free lunge with some major points emphasized. And so our takeaways today are connection and relaxation. And what does it look like and how does it show up? And you don't want your horse moving into a bigger speed or a bigger movement unless they have relaxation. And you need to be able to play with the transitions in the walk first. Slow it down, speed it up, maintain it, take it away completely into a halt. You've got to test all these things. We're working on the mind while we do that, and we're working obviously on the balance. <laughs> Thank you, love. You're exhausted, huh? <laughs> That's good. It's good that she's chewing on the whip. An open mouth is an open mind. She's not standing here tense, right? Good. And this is also part of releasing. Instead of a lick and a chew or a yawn, which does happen, your horses can get a little fidgety with the mouth. It's okay. Let it happen because it's all part of releasing the jaw, releasing the top line, releasing the pole, and it's all attached to their nervous system, which makes them produce endorphin. So there's the whole science behind all of that. It's real. All right. Thank you, and may you always be one with your horse, and I look forward to your comments. <laughs>